Hello, my name is Adriana de Lorenzo Cáceres. I work at the Instituto Astrofísica de Canarias in Spain, and I'm going to talk about galaxies anatomy, witnessing the growth of these active values. At this conference, we all understand that the stellar structures hold key information about galaxy evolution. And with galaxies anatomy, I precisely refer to studying stellar structures to understand how galaxies form and how galaxies evolve. But not only studying stellar structures as we see them in the galaxies, but dissecting them in order to recover the isolated properties of every structure to really understand what's happening to it. How do we do this? Well, nowadays we use multi-component two-dimensional photometric decompositions. So we take a galaxy image like this one here, and we model the light included in this image with a superposition of stellar structures. For each stellar structure or component, we have, we have a mathematical parametrization. This central panel here shows the best fit or model for this galaxy that we have extracted from Mendes Abreu et al, 2017. And this is the two-dimensional analysis we have performed, but usually we also visualize it in one dimension. And this is this panel here. So the black line is the surface brightness profile for this galaxy, the radial profile. The best fit is the cyan line. And in this case, we have modeled this galaxy light with a bulge in red, a stellar bar in green, and a disk in blue. Photometric decompositions are a very powerful analysis tool. And this way we can study uh, the photometric properties uh, but we are living in the era of internal field spectroscopic data. So the most ideal situation would be to have it all, to have not only spatial information, but also spectroscopic information. Because this way we can study some properties that are embedded in the spectra, like for example, the stellar population properties. So what we want to have is not only photometric decompositions, but spectrophotometric decompositions. With this idea in mind, in 2019, Jairo Mendes Abreu, Sebastián Sánchez, and myself developed C2D. C2D is a two-dimensional spectrophotometric decomposition code that works over integral field spectroscopic data. So let me show you an example. We have created a mock bulge on this galaxy using an elliptical galaxy for modeling the bulge light and an almost pure disk galaxy for modeling the disk, and we have run it through C2D. So we have run it, the internal field spectroscopic data cube through C2D, and C2D provides two IFS data cubes, one for the bulge and one for the disk. So we have not only separated the light from bulge and disk, but also for each spaxel of these data cubes, we have the corresponding spectrum. The black lines, show the original spectra we use for modeling the lights of uh, the light of bulges or disks. And the color lines, red and blue, show the uh, spectra provided by C2D for each component. And you can see by yourself the goodness of C2D performance by comparing these two lines. C2D is now able to decompose bulge and disk galaxies, but also barred galaxies. But today I'm going to show you uh, the results from a project entitled The Origin of Bulges and Disks in the Califa Survey. We have taken a sample of 129 bulge and disk galaxies, so not bar galaxies in this case, and we have run them through C2D. So we have decomposed bulge and disk light and spectra, and then we have analyzed their stellar populations with pipe 3D. With this stellar population analysis, we will study not only uh, mean ages and metallicities, but also what's called the star formation history. So the sequence of different star forming births that have given rise to the stellar populations we can see now in uh, bulges and disks separately. The goals of this project are to understand how and when bulges form, 
and also which is the role that bulges play on galaxy evolution. And to do this, we are going to look at the stellar mass growth, morphological evolution and mass size relation, and star formation. So let me now drive you through all these results. More, uh, many, uh, most of these results are already published in these publications here, but some of them are new. So I invite you also to stay tuned to uh, more publications in the future. The stellar mass growth. Well, in these plots, what we can see is age in the y-axis or metallicity against mass. Because we have dissected uh, the galaxy light in bulges and disks, we, this mass can be galaxy total stellar mass, and this is what we are showing in the top panels, or the bulge or disk masses separately. And this is what we are seeing in the bottom panels. Red points correspond to bulges, disk data points correspond to disks. And what we see when we look at these plots in general is that bulges are always older and more metal rich than the disks. This is true for all cases, but only when we go to our low mass galaxies. And here, please uh, let me highlight that our low mass galaxies are around 10 to the 10. The, the ages of bulges and disks are similar, but still bulges are always older and more metal rich. This is a, this is a look at uh, mean ages and metallicities. But we would like to study evolution as well. So let's look now to the fraction of mass against age for bulges, solid lines, and disks, dashed lines. We have separated the galaxies according to their galaxy mass in this case. So the red line correspond to the most massive galaxies and the blue lines correspond to our low mass galaxies. Again, around 10 to the 10 solar masses. What we can see is that bulges grow very fast from the very beginning. And all of them have grown most of their mass before redshift 0.6 and then they have a mild evolution afterwards. However, the case for disks is different. They grow steadily all the time with a rapid increase uh, most recently, more recently, sorry. So what we see is that bulges again form first. The conclusion when we look at the stellar mass growth is that bulges form before disks for our galaxies. Let's now look to the morphological evolution and mass size relation. We can first take a look to the bulge to total mass ratio. And this is what we are seeing here against age. Again, different galaxies uh, have been color coded according to their masses. So red uh, line indicates more massive galaxies and blue lines are for low mass galaxies. And what we see is that in general, we have a mild evolution of the bulge to total mass ratio. But what is this telling us? Well, we have to take into account that bulges are growing. We saw them before. But of course, the total galaxy is also growing. So maybe because we have dissected galaxies in bulges and disks, it's more interesting for us to look at the bulge to disk mass ratio. We have the galaxies color coded by different galaxy mass again. And what we see is that we have still this mild evolution, except for the very high mass galaxies. For them, we can appreciate how the disk is growing very recently. Mass size relation. We have size in the y-axis and mass in the x-axis. For this case, for this left-hand side panel, galaxy total stellar mass. And here in the right-hand side panel, bulge or disk mass. Red data points correspond to the bulges, blue data points correspond to the disks. Let's look first at the uh, gray contour. This gray contour is the mass size relation for the galaxies as a whole. And we can see we have the relation with an upturn at the end. When we look at the bulges, we also have this relation with this upturn, particularly when we take the bulge mass. But when we look at the disks, well, they can look that there, there is a relation when we are uh, taking into account galaxy total mass, 
But when we take into account galaxy disk mass, sorry, disk uh, mass, then the relation disappears. What we have is a cloud. So what these plots are telling us is that bulges are the drivers of the relation that we can see for the whole galaxy. Because when we look only at disks, there's no relation at all. So we saw before that bulges form first, and now what we see is that the growth of bulges is intimately linked to the growth of the whole galaxies. And they also uh, seem to drive the mass size relation we appreciate for the galaxies as a whole. Finally, we want to take a look to the star formation uh, to, because at the end, galaxy growth is related to the formation of stars. So we want to see what's happening to them. We have the star formation right plotted against mass. In this case, this left-hand side panel is showing us bulge or disk stellar mass, while the right-hand side panel is showing the results for the total galaxy mass. The red data points are the bulges, blue data points are disks, and the green data points are the galaxies taken as a whole. What we see is that disks are mainly always uh, on the star formation main sequence. And also many of the galaxies, when we take them as a whole, lay on the star formation main sequence. Only the more or the most massive galaxies that have prominent bulges lay below the star formation main sequence, where most of the bulges also lay. So what we can see is that the star formation even though we saw before that bulges uh, are intimately related to the growth of the whole galaxy, in the case of star formation, star formation is happening mainly in the disks and not in the bulges. Even for those galaxies that are very massive and that have prominent bulges that dominate the light. So some galaxy properties happen in the disks, but still they are driven by bulges, because bulges drive the evolution of the galaxy. So which is the conclusion that we are uh, picturing uh, with all these uh, pieces of evidence? Well, we can say that bulges are galaxies' hearts, because uh, at the end, what we see is that they form first, and then they decide how they grow a disk around them, and which are the properties that I, the whole galaxies, both in bulges and disks, are going to have. So bulges drive the properties of the whole galaxies. But take into account that this is particularly true for high mass galaxies. When we go to our low mass galaxies, galaxies around 10 to the 10 solar masses, the picture is not so clear. We started to see some uh, differences with respect to the behavior of the other galaxies. And also take into account that we are studying non bar galaxies. We have started a project to start bar galaxies because we understand that in these cases where we expect to have a more complex central structures uh, with probably disk-like bulges uh, promoted by secular evolution driven by the bars, then the picture is going to be a little bit different. different. So uh, we want to study all this with C2D. So I invite you to take a look at our publications and to stay tuned for more publications to come uh, about this topic. And also I invite you to take a look at Luca Constantin's talk at the same conference, uh, showing similar uh, but complementary results uh, about badges. And thank you very much for your attention and thank you very much to the organizers for this opportunity.